Hello and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage, on a late Wednesday afternoon, late October 2024, yet another beautiful day, start to finish. Well, a little foggy this morning, but it recovered with beautiful sunshine and a spectacular day. Also a spectacular day to finally work on my SFI case power glide that sadly It'll be two years ago next month. I bought the BTE case, Bellhausen, and Roller Tailhausen combination. It was a Black Friday sale and a good one. And I've been collecting parts to assemble it ever since. I have a 180 straight cut gear set, 1.80 ratio. I have a roller output support. As mentioned, this is a roller bearing tailhousing. Needs a roller bearing yoke. There's a roller bearing in the back of the case. So the case comes almost like you see it here. Uh, earlier today, I rummaged through my pots and I came up with the guide plate that holds the shift shaft from going in and out. And the rooster and pock and paw, which is underneath. And I cleaned that stuff up and assembled it. It came with the pock and paw and the spring and the guide already in the case, which is really handy. I just had to add my choice of shafts. Uh, you can have one like this, similar to what I used, where the arm is removable, because depending on your shifter, whether the shift cable is front exit or rear, rear exit, typically a front exit the arm's gonna face down in a rear exit shifter, the cable, the arm on the transmission is gonna face up. So this allows you to just take it off and put the arm that came with the shifter on the transmission. Stock power glide, this was all welded one piece. The center of the shift shaft had another rod connected to the TV linkage from the carburetor to control the pressure in the transmission all stock valve body power glide stuff. I've never built a stock body power glide, likely never will. They've all been trans brake units from the first one I built till today. Uh, I had already built a shift shaft seal installer. It's different size than a TH350, Turbo 400, 480 E, etc. Power glide seals a little bit bigger. Because of the reasons I just mentioned, in stock form, it was really big. Uh, so you can have the popular one where the arm comes off. If you have, like for instance, the Hearst quarter stick, this is an old, old shift arm right here, but it's welded one piece. If it matches your shifter, fine. Worst case scenario, you'd have to drop the pan and wiggle the, arm, the shaft in and out. Uh, be kind of a pain, but you could do it. Other than a thorough cleaning of the case, it's pretty much ready to start assembly. I was going to take the bell housing off, it came installed, and the bolts are extremely tight, probably torqued, I was going to check them, and I will one by one, but uh, my 3 8 gun wouldn't even take them out, so we'll deal with that another day. Uh, it has your typical SFI bell housing pattern, and the pump housing bolts do not hold the bell housing on which is really nice. SFI explosion proof case with a five year certification tag went into effect March of 23. They dated it, dated it ahead a little bit, which is nice. So, uh, so five in March of 20, 2028, it's going to be expired. You can have it recertified if you're racing in a class that requires you to have current SFI certs. But either way, whether it has a sticker on it or not, it's still, to the end of time, unless something happens to it, it's going to protect you. You do, you do not have to run a safety bell housing or a transmission shield over the case. Jumping ahead a little bit before the high gear clutch drum, you can have five, six, seven, eight, ten clutches. Ten being the maximum, and I happened across a JW ten clutch 
high gear clutch drum. So that's what I have. You'll notice it does not come with the pressure plate. That comes with your gear set. You can see it right here because it has a gear on it that actually engages in the planetary gears. So don't be surprised when you buy a high gear clutch drum kit. It comes with everything. It's even fully assembled with a billet piston in it. And uh, it will not have, they don't give you the snap ring either. So you have to come up with a snap ring for a high gear clutch drum. And you'll use the pressure plate that comes with the output shaft gear set. It's common practice in a power glide in both the reverse clutches and the high gear clutch drum to have an extra steel and the steel is against the pressure plate. In this case, my clutches, I have a steel on top and that's the way it stacks right there. Your reverse clutch pack needs a lot of clearance. 75 to 110 or 20 thousandths. Uh, the way to check that, uh, I bought a billet. This is a JW piston for the, the reverse piston. Uh, you can machine it for dimensions uh, for clearance, but in this case, to check it, put it in without the seals, put your clutch pack in, snap ring, turn the transmission upside down, and they give you a window. Right there, you can use a feeler gauge and check your clearance. Couldn't be any easier. My initial check, I need to machine probably 50 thousandths off the piston. So that's next on the agenda. I'd already stuck it together one time, started measuring and said, well, I promised I would document uh, assembling this transmission. Uh, when I get the clearance correct, I have new springs, a new spring retainer plate and snap ring. I already installed, or just screwed it in. It's a Sonex band adjuster. The stock band adjuster is weak and the thing's pretty long and they can bend. So I have a brand new Sonex adjuster. Uh, Power glide servos that go over here to apply the band. There's, as time goes on, technology gets better. This is a Sonex master kit it says, but this is a, called a supported servo. It helps to support the pin along its journey to apply the band. Uh, they're not big money. Comes in a kit, everything I need should be in there. And uh, along with the instructions telling you exactly what you need to know. I spent quite a bit of time reading the instructions. I have a TSR, which is right over in New Hampshire, close to me, uh, trans brake. It tells you the case modifications you'd have to do to a stock case and what to look for in an aftermarket case uh, for the reverse apply. Uh, you'd make the passages much bigger because you want a speedy release. And they want a bleed hole drilled in the piston. So I'm going to drill a 1 16th hole down through this flange here, missing the O-ring groove and coming out back here somewhere. Wish me luck. That's only a $60 piston. No big deal. <laughs> uh, but the instructions are very detailed about exactly the modifications they want you to perform to make their trans brake work properly. And that would go with everybody's trans brake. It's the heart of the transmission. It's telling everything what to do. And everybody, every manufacturer's instructions are specific to them. And I've mentioned it before. This is where you get in trouble when you're modifying transmissions that have already been modified. You gotta be careful. You don't have stacked up modifications that are, in the best case scenario, you're not gonna work. Worst case scenario, lock up the tires probably. So you gotta watch out for that. And speaking of TSR, the company, they sell pots, power glide pots. They also wrote the book, Kyle Monroe, who's passed away, I believe, uh, but the family continues on with the business wrote an excellent book. A lot of the book is dedicated to stock power glides and everything you've ever wanted to know about power glides. But there's one chapter called the drag racing power glide. That's the one you want. And they talk about every piece, lots of theory and uh, good reading. If you're 
at this point and you want to, you know, refresh your memory about everything you've ever wanted to know about the power glide and we're afraid to ask. <laughs> so I got some work to do and I'll be checking back with you. I have another power glide I built a few years ago for the LS swapped turbo dot and uh, where I broke everything down. Uh, for me, most of the stuff's brand new, so I, you know, got to clearance everything and make it work, but, you know, I'm not cleaning a whole lot of dirty pots, which I like. I had to clean up the linkage stuff today, but uh, other than the two pieces for the linkage and the front pump, which I'll be reusing an OEM pump with a new stator tube and some modifications and welding and drilling and whatnot, uh, you could buy pumps all rebuilt with different levels of modifications uh, relative to the input shaft, which we'll get into in the next video probably. Uh, you know, they're four or $500. Uh, I have a few pumps laying around. I had already bought a stator tube, so I will be just redoing my own, uh, save a little money there. The end result's the same, if not better. So that's it for tonight. And uh, I will not, rest until this thing is in one piece it's been almost two years that's a shame uh you know sometimes i you know do some soul searching it's great to have you know your your business right behind your house but it cuts in a lot a lot of times if you have work to do you choose that over working on your own stuff next thing you know years are ticking by and you haven't accomplished a whole lot so it's all relative i guess but that's my thought for tonight. So I'm working on my own stuff, at least at the moment. Sun's going down. I got to go make supper. So have a nice evening. I'll talk to you in a day or so.